I want to show you how to make a crowd like this one that you can use in stadiums, crosswalks, queues or any application where you need lots of different characters. And of course we're gonna do this in Blender's geometry nodes. I'm Dude Blender and let's jump right in. The idea is very simple, we're gonna mix and match different accessories that in turn have different possible materials and colors. This way we can very quickly get to hundreds of different possible combinations with relatively little work. In fact if you see the thumbnail that I used for the video, it might be difficult to find two characters that have the exact same accessories. If you want to pause and give it a try, go ahead and let us know in the comments what you found. Alright, I'm just gonna call this character the dude, although he can be male or female. I also made three different items for each category. We've got head accessories, eye accessories and shirts. By the way, this file is available for purchase in my Gumroad for three bucks if you want to follow along or just play with it and this way you also help to support me and the channel. The link's in the description. Actually, if you're watching this video within the first 12 hours hours since I published it, you can download the file for free. How's that sound? In any case, if you do decide to model your accessories, there's one important step that you need to know. The origin of the accessory should be in the same place as the dude's origin if he's wearing the accessory. For example, if I select the baseball cap, you'll see that the origin is way down here. If I snap the 3D cursor to the dude and then snap the cap to the 3D cursor in a way that both objects are in the exact same place based on their origin, you'll see that it looks like the dude's wearing the cap. It's the same thing with every other accessory. I also have one empty accessory. This is just a single vertex, so it will not show in the render, but it will show in the viewport so that we can easily select it. I got one for the head and one for the eyes. I don't have one for the shirts, because I want all of the dudes to be wearing clothes. Now, once you've got all of your accessories, the next step is to select each of the accessories in one category and move them to a new collection by pressing M, New Collection. Here you can name your collection for example head accessories. I've already done this before so I'm not gonna do it again. Same thing with the eye accessories and same thing with the shirts and you'll see here the three categories that I have shirts, eye accessories and in the head accessories I've got the cap, the fedora, uh, hair similar to Marge's hair from the Simpsons and an empty head accessory which is this one. Of course you could add more categories like bottoms, a mustache, jewelry and the more categories that you have the higher number of unique characters you'll be able to make. Next we want to have a few different materials for each accessory. I'm gonna go to the shading workspace and I'm gonna show you how to set this up. Alright, this is the idea, but I'm gonna delete everything to show you. So we're gonna start with the March hair. We only need one material slot. We're gonna create all of our materials right here. And then we're just gonna do some very simple mechanics so that we randomly select one of the colors. Let's say that I have three different materials. So we've got one blue with no roughness. I'm gonna make them very, very simple just to show the idea. Then we have a green one that is also metallic and has no roughness and then I have one that is purple that is also metallic but has roughness. And now we want to randomly select one of these materials for each instance of the hair. There is no random node here so we're gonna use an object info node. You'll see that there's a random socket here and this assigns a value from 0 to 1 for each instance of this object. Now let's say we want equal probabilities of each of these materials. To do that we're gonna use a mix shader node. I'm gonna connect this here. So the idea now is that if the random value is between 0 and 1 third we're gonna select this material. If it's not then we're gonna check if the value is between 1 third and 2 thirds and if so we're gonna go for this material and otherwise we're gonna go for this material. To do that we're gonna use a math node and from the drop down we're gonna select greater than. This node provides a boolean output. This means that it will only have a value of 0 or 1 which is exactly what we want to control the mix shader node. See if the factor is 0 the material will be this one and if it's 1 it will be this one. So we're gonna connect the random value to the value and we're gonna set the threshold to 1 third or 0.3333 and then we're gonna connect this to the factor. So what we're doing now is if the random value is is greater than the threshold which is one third then it will select this input if not it will select this one now we're going to do the same thing here we're going to add another mix shader here and we need another greater than node now you can either connect this socket of this same node here or you can just duplicate the node since the random number is assigned per object this number and this one will be the exact same so I'm just gonna duplicate it so that we have less crossing lines and I'm gonna connect this here now instead of one third 
we're gonna go to two thirds, which is 0.66666. I'm gonna connect this to the factor. And if we had more materials, we could just continue to do the exact same thing. So let's see what happens. If the random value was 0.1, then it would check if it's greater than 0.3. It's not, so it takes this output. If the value was 0.4, then that is greater than the threshold, so it's gonna take this route. Now it's gonna check again if the value is greater than 0.6, and if it is, it's gonna take this node. And if it's not, it's gonna take this one. So at any point, it will only select one of these three materials. Now the other materials use the exact same principle, except we only have two materials. So for example, for the cap, we have a solid color, and then we have another material. I'm gonna show you if I can find it here, that uses a combination of two different colors. Now the solid one has four different colors, and the combination has two pairs of colors to combine. Now since we only have two values, we don't need to use the greater than node, we can just use the round node. This will output one if the random value is 0.5 or higher higher and it will output 0 if it's below 0.5. Now just a couple of things to note here. We can use the random value to select a color from the color ramp. This would be 0, 0.5, 1. So if it's less than 0.125 it'll be red. If it's from 0.125 to 250 it's gonna be orange. If it's from 250 to 0.375 it's gonna be black and so on. Now one question for you, why do you think all of the colors have to be pushed to the left? Do you think that this will give us mostly gray caps? And the answer is no, it will not. Because this material will only be selected if the random value is below 0.5. All of this portion of the color ramp will never be used. The second thing we need to know is that if you want to mix and match two different pairs of colors, you have to arrange the color ramps like this. One of them divided by half and the other one with one quarter, then one half and then one quarter. This way you guarantee that you have all of the four possible combinations of colors. If we did something like this, then if the random value was around here, we would have blue and orange and if it was around here, we would have purple and yellow. Then the rest of the materials is pretty straightforward. The fedora has two materials, one solid with three different colors and a very simple burn lap material and again we're selecting between both with a round node these shades have only one material and i think i can add at least one more color then the other frame has two colors, the monocle just the one, and the shirts all use the exact same material. It's just a solid material that chooses one of four colors. Okay, that's the difficult part. Once we've got all of the accessories set up, the geometry nodes part is duck soup. We're gonna want to instance a dude in each point of a geometry, so I'm just gonna create a plane, I'm just gonna delete all of this. Okay, I'm gonna move this here, and I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. So now the idea is that we want to instance a dude in each of the vertices. If we wanted more, we could of course subdivide this and then we would have more dudes. You could even move them around or do whatever you wanted. The idea is that you want to have vertices wherever you want dudes to be spawned. Okay, now we have our plane. I'm going to go to the geometry nodes workspace, find my plane, and I'm going to click on new. I'm going to change the name to crowd dudes. Okay, shift A, instance on points, and plug that here. Now let's drag and drop our dude from the outliner, and you see that when I selected the dude, our node tree disappeared because I forgot to pin it, which is good because I added it to this collection by mistake. I'm just gonna move it away from that collection because that was gonna be a problem later. I'm gonna change the name of the plane to spawn verts. And now I'm gonna pin this. Now I'm gonna bring the information of my dude by dragging and dropping from the outliner to the editor. We have this here, and we're gonna connect the geometry to instance. So our dude is huge. If we scale the plane, the instances that are spawned on the vertices scale as well. We can just go ahead and press Ctrl A to apply the scale. And now all of the dudes should be the same size as the original. Okay, that's half of the work. Now we're gonna duplicate this node, and we're gonna do the same thing with the collections. So I'm gonna drag the shirt's collection. You'll see that it adds a collection info instead of an object info we can connect the instances to instance but we need to check separate children reset children and pick instance we're gonna connect our geometry to points and we're gonna add a join geometry node and now we've gotten rid of all of the nudity on our scene every dude now is wearing a shirt which is what we wanted and because the origin of the shirt is placed on the right position when we instance it on the exact same position as each dude it seems like the dudes are wearing the shirts now we just duplicate this again connect this to join geometry change this from shirts to eye accessories. I'm gonna move the group input to this position, connect it here, and now we have the eye accessories, and we do the same thing, shift D to duplicate, change this to head accessories. We want to connect this here, and we don't want to be zooming in and out, so if you ever need to connect something that's very far away, you can press shift alt, right mouse button, click and drag, and if there's only one output and one input, like in this case, it will connect them. But let's say just as an example, if there were more than one inputs, 
and I do the same thing, it will open up a menu where I can choose what socket to connect it to. Now we need to connect this here to points. I guess I'm gonna put this here. Et voila! All of our dudes are wearing a random selection of accessories. I'm gonna go to rendered and I will see that each of the dudes has a unique combination of accessories. The reason is that we have so many possible accessory color combinations that it's very difficult for two dudes to have the exact same combination. It's not impossible, of course there's a chance, but since we've got over a thousand combinations, it will not happen that often. I'm gonna go back to layout to have a little bit more room. And now if you ever need more dudes, you can just go here to the modifier, switch it off for a little bit with this button, tab into edit mode, I'm gonna go to top view, and then you can extrude all of the vertices that you need. In this case, it doesn't really matter that we're not making faces because the only thing that we need are the vertices. I'm just gonna add a couple more just for the example. And now if I turn the geometry nodes modifier back on, you see that we have more dudes. And that's it for today's video. I'm Dude Blender. Happy blending.